The wind can be a tennis player's most serious enemy. This is Pat Summerall here with Tony Trabert and with Barry Carrillo. And the two finalists, semi-finalists, I should say, that we'll see first, Masur and Pioline. Tony, I'll ask you about Wally Masur. He's 30 years old. What took him so long to get here? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, Pat, he has not played a seated player in this tournament. Uh, the last Aussie to win this event was John Newcomb way back in 1973. So this is a big day for Wally Masur. He's lucky to be here because in the round of 16, he played another Aussie, and he was down love five in the fifth set. He said, I was already thinking about what I was going to do when I got home. I had my mental reservations made, and he won seven games in a row to beat, beat Jamie Morgan. So he's a heck of a player. He's very solid. He doesn't have any big weapon. This is how he got there. He lost a set to Carbonell, won to Cunin, as you can see. Uh, the Jamie Morgan lost the first two sets and then came back to win and then had a very impressive win over Magnus Larson. So he's a very solid player, but with no big weapon. Very, very smart. Pretty universal of all the players today who say we're more fit. We're in better shape than we were before. Is that true with Masur? Uh, well, he's certainly very fit. He's been around for a long time, been in the top 100 for the last eight or nine years. And uh, it, to beat him, you have to play well because he's not going to beat himself. What about the Australian tradition of uh, great, great tennis players? Well, once, once Harry Hopman, there you can see what the, what some of the great Aussies have done way back from Frank Sedgman in my time, Rose Wall, uh, Mal Anderson, Ashley Cooper, and so forth. And as you can see, John Newcomb, the last one to win here in, in 73. So uh, Harry Hopman left there, came to America. He's no longer with us, and the, their, uh, their tennis has certainly gone downhill. Well, we had a chance to ask Wally Masur about that tradition the great Australian champions from the 50s and through John Newcomb later on. We have had a great tradition of, of players. We had that golden era in the 50s and 60s and early 70s, but uh, we'll never duplicate that again for a lot of reasons. But um, I'm, I'm obviously very proud to be Australian. I'm proud to have played Davis Cup for Australia. And uh, the fact that, uh, you know, I'm in the semi-finals of the US Open of a major event like this is terrific. Wally Masur, Mary Carrillo, what about Cedric Pioline? First time since a Frenchman has been this far since 1932. It's been a while that uh, a Frenchman has done so well. And in fact, Cedric Pioline, though he's got all kinds of Gallic flair and explosive power, is not a typical Frenchman. He's not uh, as emotional and sometimes as irrational as the great French players we've seen in the past, like Henri Leconte or Yannick Noah. He's a thinker, a planner, and he's had to work very, very hard to get into this semifinal. He is the man who knocked out Jim Curry. That's been the biggest upset of the tournament, but it's taken him 16 and a half hours to get into the semis. That's two hours more than any other man in the semifinals. He had two five-setters. Uh, to start things off against David Prinisel, the German, and Jared Palmer, Palmer, the young American. Then he took out Mats Wielander quite easily. Jim Courier, I mean, this was his best match by far. He didn't play nearly as well against Andre Medvedev in the in the quarterfinals, but he is a he's a, a planner, a thinker, and that's what's gotten mm -hmm. him so far. He's gotten himself out of trouble for the last 10 days. He comes from a very athletic family. He yes, himself he does. is very gifted. Yes, he really is. He's a uh, he's actually he comes from volleyball stock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> his gene pool suggests that he should be somewhere else. Uh, both his parents played volleyball, but this man has really improved in the last 4 years and uh, his serve has gotten better, his running forehand has gotten better. And I really, you know, he can he can pull this off. Wally Masur, as Tony says, he's a man without a big game, but he'll continue attack, to attack behind stuff. You know, he's going to attack on not great weapons, and he's going to allow Pialine to, to hit winners. And if Pialine can do enough of them, this guy's going to lose, and Pialine will be in the finals. If Pialine can't come up with the good stuff, then Wally Masur is going to win. Tony, you have some thoughts. Well, they played once, as you can see there, and I saw that match uh, in the round of 16 at Wimbledon, 8-6 in the fifth set. You could not play a closer tennis match. That was seesaw all the way. Of course, that was a grass court. That's not Pialine's favorite, and mm -hmm. I think it is Wally Masur's favorite. So we had a chance to talk to Cedric Pialine about his background and his chances in this tournament. We played in uh, Wimbledon in the fourth round, and uh, I won 8-6 uh, in the fifth, so it was very close. And uh, it's a very uh, solid player. He's, he's not gi give, he's, he doesn't give uh, points. Uh, he's making always. Uh, he's playing always in the court, so it's, it's going to be hard. We talked about uh, Pioline's athleticism. He had a cousin who was the trampoline champion. So Whatever that is. Whatever that is. And how you get there. <laughs> Keep your feet on the ground, I guess. 
Chair umpire Dan Alicanto. Gadsden, Alabama. He's a good one. He keeps control. The big matches pop up, he pops up. 15 love. Bright sunshine. And extremely windy. 30. Football love. weather. Mm -hmm. Feels like it. Young Frenchman, he has terrific ground strokes. He can punish you from the backcourt. He can also attack with either the forehand or backhand. Second ace of this match, 53rd ace of the tournament for Cedric Pioline. Masur's only had 28. Again, Masur hasn't the same sort of explosive shots as the Frenchman. does so well. 40-15. You'll see Masur brush up the back of the ball, hitting excessive top spins so it clears the opponent and drops quickly. And once it hits the court, it runs away from his opponent. 40-15. Game. That's a game well served First game. by Pioline. Masur serving. And watching. Love 15. <laughs> you know, that is not that easy to do. Serves hit 100 miles an hour, and the guy just sort of flips a backhand out the other way. Watch Pioline. Watch how easy he makes this look. And just keep on walking. That's 100 miles an hour coming at you. Sir describes himself saying, I have to construct a point. I have to set it up. I can't just beat him with one shot. Anybody, I have to move it around. It takes two or three, four shots sometime before I can win the point. He will try to pressure and attack without a big shot. Right. He doesn't have the benefit of, of the big forehand appealing or the sweeping backhand or the big serve. Love up to like that three break points. He's come out on fire. Yes, he has. But that's why Wally likes the grass court, because the ball stays lower, harder to be passed, and you get a few funny bounces, et cetera. So it makes his game even that much more effective. Here, it's a very true bounce, true footing. And to this point, Peeling's seen it very well and handled really it well. Has. might look dejected already but don't let that fool you no sir you don't get to the semis the US Open by being dejected no. early in a match and, and turning it off and quit trying I mean you also don't come back from love five down in the final set if you're going to give up it's not in their makeup Game. Game to Pioline. That's a heck of a shot he just hit. This is what's going to happen in this match. Wally Masur is going to, again, try to attack. 
without a big shot and give us and give Pielin the chance to miss. So far, Pielin hasn't missed much. Did you see how short Masura's approach was? Though, about a foot past the service line, and a guy like Pielin with his ground strokes will really take advantage of that. If you attack and the other guy's got a bigger gun, that uh, leads to difficulty. <laughs> yeah. Well, the best chance you have, obviously, is to get the ball very deep. It takes it longer for it to get back to you. You have more time to intercept it. 15 long. This was third ace. Gusty out there, and mm -hmm. it's actually just flat cold out here right now, isn't it? You're right again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, last week it was very hot, humid. Another look, the return by Masur. Catches the top of the net. Now that's what hurts you right there with some pace on it, fairly deep. Gets Masur on the run. And then the Frenchman closes in to get the volley high over the net. <laughs> to this point, Pialin has been in command, but things can change quickly. In this kind of weather, we're going to see some miss hits. We're going to see some come off the frame. More so from this man, probably. He's 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 got longer swings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More racket speed. 25 miles an hour, the wind and gusts, and it goes around in circles down on the court. Take your eye off it just a little bit. Game, Game to peel in. Three love, first set. Men's semifinal, U.S. Open of 93. Blustery, cool day in Flushing Meadows. Wally Masur has only been able to win four points so far. Missed badly that first volley. He's a veteran. He's 30 years old, the oldest player left in this event, but that doesn't mean he won't be nervous for a little bit. He's never gotten this far in a singles grand slam. That really might make him more nervous. saw a lot of that a couple of days ago. And the forehand used to be the weaker side of Pialin. He used to make an awful lot more mistakes off this wing. And Courier tried to break it down, and he couldn't. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Took it beautifully. He used to catch that forehand a little bit later. And now he's really coming out in front of it. Too, yeah. It might be a good idea for Masur to stay back a little bit and not give Pialin targets because Pialin has been having his way when Masur has taken him, mm. taking it to the net. But Wally's not going to out rally him from the baseline. Yeah, but again, this man, he, I've seen him go off too, Tony. Maybe uh, <laughs> if you don't give him targets, he'll make mistakes on his own. That's just, Masur's got nothing to do with this match yet. 
He's a spectator like we are. That's just a heck of a shot. So another break. Here's another look at that top spin lob. It freezes Masur. Not a bad volley, not a lot of pace on it, but look at Wally. He's just frozen, and here's, see where it lands. It's what it looks like, how the Frenchman produced it, right up the back of the ball, excessive topspin. First Frenchman to reach the U.S. Open semifinals since Henri Cochet back in 1932. He's never won a pro singles title, but his ranking this year has jumped from 60 to 14. So something happened. <laughs> something good is happening. He's talking about French wine. part this man Pialin, has been helped by Henri Dumont who's not even a tennis coach he's much more like a, a management uh, sort of an efficiency expert who's been with him now this is about the fourth year they've been together Henri the ghost this man calls him because he went home the day before the courier match because he was opening helping to start up another company looking for a job <laughs> another I, job and I think he had a hunch that his, his man wasn't going to win either exactly. <laughs> and he's not here today either in fact they've been speaking very much on the phone. Dumont does not work on Keeling's strokes. He works on his head. He teaches him how to use the game he's got, how to be more efficient. You can see how strong his service game has been this open. And of course, it's not just the serve itself, but it's how well he backs it up. Peeling continues to hit the top of the net. Everything works for him. Fine touch here. Wally gets to it at the last moment. Can't do anything about it. Here's how much court Masur has to cover. That was a good shot there. Got it down low, but now look at it. He has to track this one down. Man's 30 years old. That's unfair to make him do all that work, Patrick. I forgot. Make sure you keep it deep. Break point now for the Aussie. Try to get one of these service breaks back. Long. 
I think our, our pals at Channel 9 Australia are picking up our coverage, Pat. And I work with oh, Newcomb and Stolle uh, on like Wimbledon and the French and and I believe they're picking up our our coverage. So I know that it's early all, in the morning. Yeah, they start yeah. at one, I think, in Sydney. But there are a lot of a lot of them up and a lot of them got the uh, VCRs out to tape it. You don't have too much problem That's staying up. <laughs> It's funny because Number the English, four. yeah, fourth ace. 116 miles an hour. The English press here, and they've been starved for any kind of a, a tennis story for so long now. They're picking up now. They claim Wally Masur because he was actually born in South Hampton, England. That's right. But there's not a, a bigger Aussie in the world than Masur. He says, I hate that English connection. Oh, boy. Peeling. That's five. Game to Peeling. Five love. Peeling leads. Five, five games to love. love. Men's semifinal. Pioline Masur. Yeah, that score is correct. Pioline <laughs> dominating so far. He really has. Wally Masur is serving at 100%. <laughs> and he's still only won two points on serve. That's pretty depressing. There we go. First ace today. Maybe he's doing the old Jamie Morgan routine. Yeah. He was down five love <laughs> to Jamie Morgan in the fifth set a couple of rounds ago. Came back and won. And somehow I don't think so. No. He's just being comprehensively beaten. see Masur hasn't missed a first serve and look how many he's won what percentage the appealing plays like this Masur doesn't have a weapon in his in his arsenal to hurt him but so he has to hope that Peeling's level comes down a bit where he starts making some mistakes maybe gets a little nervous or something but he's just being killed right now he will get better Oh, it is, he's not going to lose love, no. love, and love. That you can book. in the winner's yeah. department as well. 16 to 2. Perspiration come off Masur when he starts to sweat. Five one. Peeling will serve for the set, the first set. Still coming up uh, later on this afternoon, the women's final. Graf and Sukaba, and then after that, the other men's semifinal, Pete Sampras against Andre Volkov. Super Saturday on CBS. There have been uh, some Saturdays that have been more super than others. 
longer at least. Pialine's been super on this Saturday so far. This man is very much a lone wolf. He and uh, his coach Henri Dumont pretty much exist by themselves. In fact, he's ranked number one in France, but he elected not to play Davis Cup. He didn't want to play because the French Federation refused his request to have Dumont there with him during the Davis Cup ties. He wanted him, they wanted closed practice sessions and things like that. So far, 30 plus. Pialine just is not making any mistakes. Uh, everything is working. He hits the top of the net. It falls over. The Aussies have a, a, a saying. They hope he gets off the boil. You know, it just <laughs> doesn't play this well or else he's in big trouble. So far, Pialine has been going for all of his shots and making so many winners. And he's only had two unforced errors. Can't get much cleaner than that. First double of the day. This is Muriel Berko Pialines. He calls it her my almost wife. <laughs> they have a, a six month old baby. They're very French, you, my almost wife. Not what you call ugly either. <laughs> no. Might change that almost. Works hard to get himself into a winning position on the point. He constructed it well, Masur, and then just missed this volley. He could have made this. It was down a bit low. It dipped. But uh, there was a pretty good chance for Masur to find a nice angle off the court, and he missed it. Set point. A couple of them for the Frenchman. Peeling gets on his shots. His were much deeper overall than than Masur's. Still a set point. Six games to one. CBS Sports coverage of the United States Open Tennis Championships is sponsored by Infinity Luxury Automobiles. Infinity, it's everything that's possible. The Mutual of Omaha Companies, insurance to protect your changing world. And by Fuji Film, the official film of the 1993 U.S. Open. 
this was the last point of the first set. Watch how Masur is fooled. Peeling fakes a drop shot and Thank then you. pushes it deep. See Masur wow. starting forward, and he landed in behind him in the corner. An absolutely smart play by the Frenchman, and he wins the first set comfortably at 6-1. Wally's got to get off to a better start here. Just don't let Peeling hit it. Second ace for Wally Masur. It's not like Masur's playing badly. We, I mean, that first set was 40 points. This man made only six on force errors and was still only able to win one game. This was set up by the Masur depth. Watch how deep this is. Now you see Peeling retreating. When he makes a drop volley, he has too much distance to get to it. So that was all set up by a good deep shot. Third command at the net cuts off the short angled volley. If the ball is higher than the top of the net, you hit that volley cross court inside the service box. It's harder to get to. On a gusty day like this, you're going to see some easy balls miss, those that aren't hit hard, because they get blown around. And gusty it is. Indeed. Get out the second. Strong game by Missouri. He wins first game, first second game. set. Second, second set. set. Pioline serving. Dominated the first set. Masur has won the first game of the second set. As I said, uh, Pioline dominated that first set, except in first service percentages. Masur only missed one first serve. Still didn't do him much good. No. 17 winners by Peolines. Only two. two, yeah. That might have something to do with that 6 1 score. Oh. Missed it. 15. <laughs> That's the kind of thing that Masur is hoping for that Peoline will come down a little bit, stop making everything. You almost think he has to. Yeah, I don't think he can play as well as he's played his first set throughout this match. I may be wrong. We saw two absolutely sublime sets from Pete Sampras the other night against Michael Chang. This, is, this, this brand of tennis is right up there with that. 30, 50. Six in the age department. 108 miles an hour. Pretty loose motion. Fully extended. Look at the placement on that. 108 miles an hour, as you mentioned, Pat, and place it right down the tee. Pialin in the last two years has really added to his serve. It used to be fairly ordinary, and he's added 15 miles an hour. Well, there's nothing very ordinary about what he's done so far. Another one per placed perfectly. Okay. One all. One, one game. And let's send you to Pat O'Brien. All right, Pat, thank you. Where's Gavin Hopper, who works with uh, Wally? Uh, what's wrong with him? What was wrong with him early? Well, I think it was a combination of both uh, Peeling starting off very, very well. He was hitting the ball crisply. He was really hitting the ball uh, hard. Wally started off a little bit slow, which he does in many matches. I suppose his 30-year-old legs uh, need a couple of games to warm up, but uh, I think it was the combination of both, and that uh, hurt him in the first set. But I feel like it's just starting to even up slightly here. 
Maybe he's got him where he wants him, based on his comeback the other night. Yeah, that might be right. I hope it's not. Uh, hope it doesn't let him get too far ahead, though. I think at the moment, while he's starting to move a little bit better, which is uh, which is helping his uh, his whole game. I think if Pierlene perhaps doesn't put put as much pressure on him in the next few games, you might see a little bit of a turnaround here. That's what I'm hoping in here. How is Wally when he gets behind? What happens to his head? Well, actually, mentally, he's pretty he's pretty tough, as uh, shown the other night. That was uh, obviously one in a million chance to get through five love down the fifth, but uh, mentally he is pretty strong. He tends to worry about the point that's in hand, not worry about what's happening, uh, what's happened previously, what's going to happen in the future. Tend to play the point that's in hand, and I think that's why a lot of players respect him on the circuit because he does play that way. Gavin, thank you. That's the book on Wally. The name of my book is going to be back to you, Pat. Pat? <laughs> <laughs> If they ever make Crocodile 3, we just found the lead. <laughs> yeah, and Hop, Hopper is a, a really, is a terrific guy, a real dinka mozzie just like this man here. And he has gotten Wally Masur supremely fit. Wally Which hit. means that he can last, he can go the distance. Oh, yeah. Wally hit one more volley there than he wanted to. That high backhand volley he didn't get a good piece of and didn't get it away. Four, four, <laughs> My experience playing Australians, they're going to go the distance mm. with you. You might beat them, but you're going to have to fight them all the way, and, and you admire them for that because there are certain people and players over the years that when you get ahead of them, it looks a little hopeless, they quit. When the band plays Good Night Sweetheart, they'll still be there. And old Lang Syne and everything else. Game, Mr. Sir, 2 1 in the second. Yes, sir, two games. Thank you. Thank you. Cedric Pioline won the first set 6 1. Masur. Leads in the second set, Pioline serving. The way Pioline plays, it's hard to believe he hadn't won a tournament. I mean, uh, you know, he's got the ground, he's a good serve course. He gained an awful lot of confidence at Wimbledon. You could see mm -hmm. that confidence growing. And the, the win that he had over Wallen Masur in a round of 16 was such a dogfight, and he, he stuck it out. that or he's been playing in some pretty tough tournaments. <laughs> well, no less than Jim Courier <laughs> said that of P. Lee and after he lost to him that he expects very much that this man will be in the top 10 quickly. He's not far away now. He's no. 14. has been in a bit of a slump of late. Their uh, their great moment came a couple of years ago in Lyon, France, where the yeah. French team, <laughs> with Captain Yannick Noah leading Henri Leconte and Guy Forget to victory over the U.S. team of Agassi and Sampras. And, but since then, things have really fallen off. Well, Forget's hurt. He has a bad knee. He's and got a bad knee. Back problems. And exactly. Yannick Noah quit, the, quit being the captain of the team the very next year. This man, Pielin, is not playing for Davis Cup. 40. Well, he is so much different in temperament. Since 1932, the four Frenchmen who have gotten this far to the quarters are beyond. Of course, Henri Cochet was one of the great four musketeers, and that was near the end of their reign. They were more effective in the 20s. Cochet, Lacoste, Brunel. Two days ago, René Lacoste, the great French player who is a thinking man, much like this man right here, he wrote a, he wrote a story in, in L'Equipe, which is a big sports news, newspaper in France, saying, tennis is an individual sport. Let this man play Davis Cup. Let him have his coat. You know, let this man play. 
and hopefully the French Federation will do just that. Again, Philippe Chartrier, who, who ran French Tennis Federation for so many years, he too is no longer um, involved. So uh, Pialine has become a real breath of fresh air in French tennis. Well, they got to figure a way to get him on their Davis Cup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I think they'll let him in. <laughs> Have and, a meeting of the minds. Yeah, but a uh, pretty passionate letter written a couple of days ago by Rene Lacoste suggesting just that. Take a shot of that of that last name, uh, yeah. Pussy, please. Uh, Luke. Last of the French trainers. <laughs> The nice thing about that point, what the pros do so well, watch the difference in the backswing now. As he gets in, there's a long backswing there. Now watch when he gets in close. Shorter preparation for control. As you get closer to your opponents, you have less time to respond. You don't need that big swing. You're not hitting the ball as, as far. The average club player has the same backswing for every shot, no matter where they are on the court. you with good solid ground strokes very consistent the winner is yeah hard to get your teeth in a match when your opponent isn't allowing it 11 games and he's got 15 more placements than, than his opponent intended on this last shot but when Masurga is close he goes straight at the Frenchman to handcuff him this one see if you hit it to the side they might respond to it but that thing coming right at you makes you blink watch how he has to flinch it's like looking right down the barrel of a 22 I guess I was gonna ask you <laughs> Thirty. You made a good point in the opening too. I think about Pialini. He's not the volatile, typical Frenchman, emotional and and letting so many things bother him. He's a very calm, solid kid. He's a thinking man player too. Here's an ISO on the Aussie. Watch him come in here. He knows that when Pialine has to run that far and the ball's low, he can't do much with it. Game Masur. Game Masur. Leads 3 2. Masur leads 3 -2. Back at the USTA's National Tennis Center, men's semifinals at the moment. Pat Summerall with Mary Carrillo and Tony Traber. Pialine and Masur. Pialine dominated the first set. Serving at 2 3 in the second. And Wally's done a good job to get into this match a little bit now. He's stemmed the tide a little.
win it. He's getting bored by all those peeling winners. You know, those that play the game understand it's just not that easy to hit winners from the baseline like that. Unfortunately, the pros in most sports make it look so easy that the average person, heck, I could do that. I'll try it sometime. <laughs> The ball might have been long. Didn't say much about it. He said after he beat Jim Courier, someone asked him about his game. He said, hey, he's supposed to be the best. I beat him. Stadium court. So I must be pretty good. Uh, not too bad, huh? Body that got in a short response, and then Masur being able to get closer. She right there is good, good shot, tough ball for the Frenchman, and now he can't handle the next one. So a smart veteran play by Masur. Second break point chance for Masur. good volley there. He's very competent at the net. Very quick. Yep. And mechanically he's pretty sound. The forehand volley looks a little bit less sound than the backhand volley, but it's certainly not bad. That ball is feeling away. Second set, Pioline won the first set. In little Wally's world, first Aussie since Darren Cahill to make the U.S. Open semis. Only the second unseeded man in the history of the tournament to make the semis without beating a seeded player. And the 26th unseeded man to make the semis in the tournament history. Who are the other 25, Patrick? Can you just rifle those by me in a hurry? <laughs> it's cold. It is cold, right? 
Ty Air at Wimbledon, two out of three years, a fellow named Kurt Nielsen from Denmark got to the finals, mm -hmm. uh, was unseated. Vic Sacius, who's here today, beat him one year in 53, and I beat him in 55. that Fred Stolle, my pal, won it here in 66, and he was unseated, the fiery one. Controlled play by Pialine. First comes the lob. Good job by Masurdis to get it back. Now you'd think he's going to cut this cross court, and that's what Wally thought. He stayed in the backhand corner. doesn't get the first volley in a good position. It was short and straight down the middle of the court. That's what happens. Thirty all. Three three in the second set. for the Frenchman. You got a lot of tennis fight left in that veteran Australian, so don't sell him short yet. Still, he'd better win this game. He's already down a set if he were to go down a break. He's had an awful hard time against Peeling's serve. He'd be in an awful lot of trouble in this semifinal. So it sure doesn't look like Pialine is coming down much. after this word from your local station. Please move to your seats quickly. Men's semifinal. Pioline won the first set over Missouri 6 1. Quite nice. Serving at 3 4 in the second. Thank you. Thank you. Wally has raised the level of his game. Quite nice. Battling hard, but yep. he's still it's an uphill struggle. But to his credit, he's in this second set. And if he can Please put a couple together and get a break and win the second set, it, that it can, the con complexion can change quickly. Sound like you're cold. I am cold. 63 degrees when we started, and it's probably 60 now the way it feels or less. Thank you. Waiting for the people who are arriving to be seated. Healing will serve. Well, I'll know what you want. You'll wait some more. Temperature, as you said, 63 degrees. Humidity, 60 percent. But that wind, as far as the players are concerned, and in some cases, as far as the announcers are concerned, is the big factor. You know, we've talked to the media a lot the last couple of weeks, and they talk about not a lot of named players and this and that. And I try to say to them, look, you've got young people coming up that you're going to get to know very well. Get to know Cedric Piolini. He is one of them. He's going to be around a while. He's a good tennis player.
He can he can do it all. Good forehand volley. This is sort of an awkward smash. Somewhat of a stiff arm. The bolo. A la Jimmy yeah. Connors kind of a smash. Talk about the young Pialine. While he was two or thirty, the oldest man by far left in the men's open. And after he had his remarkable comeback against Jamie Morgan a couple days ago, he said, I'll never do that again. I'm too old. That's right. <laughs> Volkov and Masur, and Volkov and Pete Sampras, of course, in the other semi. Coming up later today. That's after the women's final. Pat, thank you. On pressed row with Graham Agars and Michelle Souter, Australian radio, French radio. You guys sit next to each other, but you don't usually work this hard this late in the tournament, do you? Uh, not against each other, no. We were going to sit back to back so that we didn't have to look at each other today, but uh, uh, the Frenchman started really well, so Michelle's smiling right now, but I think we're fighting back at the moment. He's been a surprise in this tournament, Cedric. Yeah, of course, because he beat uh, Jim Courier, especially beat Jim Courier, and uh, then uh, Andre Medvedev. So it's, uh, it's very tough, uh, especially for the French, to beat two great guys in a, in a row. So the, it happened, and now I think it's a good chance for uh, Piolin to, to be in the, in the final, because I think he has the weapons. It's a little after 6 o'clock, uh, I guess quarter after 6 p.m. in France, and what's uh, quarter after 3 or 2 in the morning? 2.15 tomorrow. So there's a lot of Aussies with bleary eyes sitting up watching this thing. I can remember when I was a kid, actually, wondering why all these events were played so late, you know. It's incredible. But uh, there will be lots of Aussies. We're used to doing it. We sit up to watch Wimbledon. We sit up to watch the US Open, the Masters Golf, all of these events. And uh, the time difference is such that Australia is always completely the reverse. Tony Travert's neighbor, how's his golf game? Well, he's uh, pretty, pretty good. He's got very strong forearms. I don't know where he got those from with that tennis game, but he can hit a ball, I tell you. Gentlemen, thank you. Good day. Bon journée. Back to you, Pat. <laughs> well done, Patrick. Graham, his wife, Catalina, have a wonderful life. They cover both golf and tennis, and they travel together and write and do radio. Terrific people. Wally Masur is fighting an awful lot of other Australian sports in the Aussie papers. It's uh, rugby time down there. The rugby playoffs are going on in Sydney. Australian rules playoffs are going on in Melbourne. In fact, Gavin Hopper, this man's fitness coach, used to be the fitness trainer for the Fitzroy team, Australian rules. A wild sport. Mm -hmm. First time you see it. <laughs> Tremendous chance for Pialine. Second serve. Still has two chances for a 5-4 lead.
if you're going to see a little, some nerves from the Frenchman, this would be a spot where you might see it, where he realizes he chan has a chance to break this open. He's two of seven on breakpoint chances, Pelin. And another second serve. Yes. Fans are pulling for this man. He used to be known years ago as, as a fader, as a guy who couldn't close out a match. And then he acquitted himself beautifully, Masur, a couple of years ago, 89. Davis Cup Australia against Peru in Peru in Lima. He lost his first singles match and then had to play the final rubber against Pablo Araya and ended up winning that one. Kind of turned everything around for Masur. in the program of the U.S. Open of 1993, Thank you. Arthur Ashe. Wife Jean and daughter Cameron. Camera. Fueling to serve, 4-5 in the second. And Masur dodged a big bullet in he that did. last game. Fueling won the first set. And very, very handy style. Masur was born Ian Walter. Everyone calls him Wally, though, and he, he's more, much more of a Wally than an Ian he, Walter. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what he'd say if you called him Ian. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that a couple of years ago, he was playing a, a Davis Cup tie against India in Australia, and there were signs all over the court. Feeling. The sign said, Wally, don't be a Wally. And that's, a, that's an Aussie expression. A Wally means that you're sort of a goofball. You're sort of, and in fact, I had to ask Graham Agars, the radio guy we just heard from, what it means to be a Wally. He said, well, that's the sort of guy you give him 20 bucks and it falls out of his pocket on the way to the grocery store. In New York, we call him a schlemiel. <laughs> But uh, as I said, he's, he used to have sort of a wally -S reputation, and he's surely at this tournament, for so many people who've never seen him play, he's proven that he's not a Wally. He fought very hard in that last game, but Peeling's got chances to go up again. Well, Wally looks like he could make the all Madden team. <laughs> yeah, he's one of John's kind of yeah. guys. 40. That's only the second of the day for Peeling. He's looking up as though it was the wind's fault. The NFL today at 12:30, Philadelphia at Green Bay. That's where John Madden will be, by the way, with Reggie White a chance to welcome his ex-teammates to Packer Country. It all begins with those two: Terry Bradshaw, Greg Gumble. 
All you need to know no. on the NFL today. Pat O'Brien will join them as well. Then you'll really get all you need to know. Quite a change from the first set blowout 6 1 for Masur didn't know what hit him. Five all now in the second. in the first set those four hands yeah everything he touched was good <laughs> and he got the lucky ones with it the, the net cords and everything else Watch where the lob lands. Just inches inside. This he hits on the throat. This was not quite as perfect a shot, but it goes down as a winner. Well, as you pointed out, and we've been pointing out, it's so windy. And you saw Pauline look back up, mm -hmm. recognizing the gusting winds. Watch how deep Masur is to make this passing shot. Falling backwards. That is some tennis shot. coming in to the stadium here at the USTA's National Tennis Center. Men's semifinals, Wally Masur, Cedric Pioline. Oh! We're in the second set. Pioline serving at 5-6 after winning the first set. 6-1. Looked unbeatable at that point. Shots like that. Oh, it's a rifle shot. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you really can't hit the ball much harder than that, and he's doing it with good control. Here's another look. Not that one. Watch this one. He has plenty of time. Tremendous racket head speed. Gets him that pace. Knockdown. 30. 30. Still to come. Later today, the women's final crop. Sukuna. After that, the other men's semifinals, Sampras and Volkov. Forty love. 109 miles an hour. Well placed serve. Okay. Six all, second set, tie break. 
six games all. Tie break. And the tie break, of course, the first player to win seven points with at least a two-point advantage will win the set. Pierlene's tie break record, 11 and 14 in 1993. Mastur, 17 and 10. In the only other match these two played at Wimbledon, they had one tiebreaker and the Sur won that. Seven mile an hour serve. Masur saw his opportunity to attack and did it beautifully. point good serve hustles in careful good volley placed it well and now this one he saws off at a short angle and you can angle that volley into the service court you're in good shape Very good service motion, nice and fluid. The racket doesn't really stop. And again, that placement, 110 miles an hour. Players change ends. They do that after every six points in a tie break. Sir Gambles tries it another forehand here. Peeling served wide to the forehand, figuring that Monsieur would be stepping around it, and it worked for him. Monsieur won the first four points. Of the tie break. The Frenchman won the next three. Now he'll get a look at the second serve.
good approach shot by Pia Lean and just a better passing shot by Masur. Watch how deep the approach is. And then that one right smack down the line, hit with pace, nice and low. Five three Masur. See, Masur is not trying to knock you down with the first serve. He's trying to move it around, place it well. set points for the Aussie. Open, the USTA's National Tennis Center. And again, as you can see, the crowd still filing into the stadium for the first of the two men's semifinals today. Sandwiched in between the women's championship. Graf and Sukova. Before the day is over, that'll be packed. A few seats. As you can see up at the top of your picture now. Sets are one all. Buelin 6 1 in the first. And the tie break Masur won the second set. Well, that was a perfect <laughs> illustration of, the, of what the wind will do. Masur set up like he was going to smash. Watch me back up like he's going to smash it now. All of a sudden, he's got to rush <laughs> forward <laughs> and hit a high forehand. Oh. That wind fooled him. The winner's by set. Pialina is keeping it pretty even, but look how much better Wally Masur has been able to do. Kept it just two in that first set. Now he's getting off some winners of his own. Well, he again fakes a drop shot, hits it deep, has a sitter volley. May have been a tad casual, actually. Trying to impart a little underspin. to come 
the women's final this afternoon after this match. And uh, this one is better than to read the paper during. <laughs> Elena Sakova has gotten off two terrific upset wins this week. She's the headliner. And she beat Martina Navratilova. And then yesterday took down Arantxa Sanchez Vicario. Got a break point still here for right. Sur. He's had two of them get away. That's the ninth. 111 miles an hour. Love 40. He's really kept his head you know, throughout this championship when he's gotten in trouble, when he's gotten into big situations. He hasn't panicked, has he? No, no. neither is it his opponent. No, no, <laughs> I was going to say, neither has Wally. Yeah. Third set. Big chance there. Please, 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 please. Super please, please, Saturday please. at the U.S. Open here on CBS. <laughs> That's the stadium. And down on the court, Wally Masur, the Australian about to serve. Shows you what Wally Masur has done in the second set on his second serves. Notice the location all to the Pialine backhand, trying to stay away from the forehand of Pialine on the second serve. He tried very hard not to even let Pialine see us a second serve. <laughs> that first set, he only missed one of them. That a pretty nice looking serve for, for the winner, his fourth ace. Excuse me, 30. Now he'll look at a second serve. Let's see where this goes now. See if it goes up the center on the backhand, and it does. An obvious game plan for uh -huh. Masur. 30-year-old Wiley veteran. Good second serve here. He closes fast. That's a good thing for the average player to notice that the pros closing on that ball, get as close as they can on the high floater. Scouting report. Absolutely. Good volley there. Notice how he stays ready. He wasn't sure that next one was going to come back or not. Douglas enjoying the tennis. His wife Ann next to him. Tennis fans. He has a tennis court in his backyard. Plays all the time, as does his wife. Third. 
That points one. They're both pretty good up there. Yes, they are. Those are both good percentages. Forty love. Pioline gets to come in behind bigger serves. We'll be back at the U.S. Open after this word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the United States Open Tennis Championships is sponsored by Xerox, the document company. The travelers and its independent agents and brokers for insurance, investments, and managed health care come in under America's umbrella. And by Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. but that Masur is attacking Pioline's backhand. Right. doesn't mean that his backhand's terrible by no. any means. He just feels that he can handle it less well on the return of serve. And to this point, it has worked for him. Mm -hmm. 40 love. Boy, that's a pretty play off a tough leg court. Masur holds his ground. Right now, let's go to Pat O'Brien. All right, Pat, thank you. Watching the match along with our viewers, with Fred Stolle, the last unseated player to win the U.S. Open in 66. Seems like yesterday, right? It does seem like yesterday. A uh, very big crowd in here, though, today. Uh, I guess it's a set all. Everybody's coming in for lunch now, Pat. The Tennis Magazine Hospitality Suite. Were you surprised that Wally's this far in the tournament? Oh, uh, well, I think it's a big thrill for him. We're certainly surprised that he got out of that one with Jamie Morgan, but uh, I think Wally is uh, one of the toughest, one of the hardest working players out there, and it's a great thrill at age 30 for him to get to a first semi-final here, particularly at the U.S. Open. Any element of uh, fear about his first set, or is he just a late, a late starter? Well, I think he was nervous going out there, Pat. You know, he, he's come from behind in that one with Jamie Morgan. He gets out there and finally gets into the second set, uh, the second set tiebreaker. He played a great second set tiebreaker. Pialine helped him out with that double fault to get it at one set all. So this could be a long afternoon at the office for him now. What do you like about his game? Well, he's just tenacious. I think you don't beat Wally. You have to beat Wally Masur. He doesn't really have a big shot. He's not like a, a Newcomb with a big serve. But he's as fit as Roy Emerson used to be. And uh, he's not going to get tired out there, I don't believe. So he hangs in there. Uh, you, you're going to have to beat him. And Pialine uh, plays a similar type of game to Wally Masur. So uh, this one is going to be a long afternoon. I think. Fred, thank you. Enjoy the day. Thank you very much, Pat. Back upstairs. All right, Pat, thank you. One of my very favorite people in all of tennis, the fiery one, Fred, Fred. Stolle. I get to work with him a lot. I'll just say, I don't know who that guy was, but he sounded like he knew some tennis. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Three-time runner-up at Wimbledon, one here. <laughs> French Open winner. As you can see, the weather is on the cool side. Passing shot, Peeling stays left of the center court, center stripe. He's thinking the ball is going down the line. Masur able to hook around the outside of the ball and get it back cross court. 40 30.
Pialine starting to let you know that it's windy, and that's a good sign for Masur. Taking those big, long swings at it. And also that if things start to bother you a little bit, the other guy watches you and gets to know it. He's having a bad patch here, isn't he? He's yeah. missing shots that he was making easily in set one. He's had Masur running all over the place, and that really was not that tough of volley except for the win. Mm -hmm. Hundred and sixteen miles an hour. I think that's the hardest one he's hit today. Nice to be able to hit your way out of trouble. When you're struggling a bit. The USTA's National Tennis Center, Flushing Meadow, New York, Flushing Meadows, Super Saturday here on CBS. <laughs> this one's a long ways from over. We got a lot more tennis coming too. One of these two, <clears throat> excuse me, one of these two to face either Volkov or Sampras. That match to come later after the women's final. Okay. Yeah. 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 The Village Market at the USTA's National Tennis Center. I think a few items available there. And a few customers back on the stadium court. Men's semifinal. Masur and Pioline. You would expect Masur to win that kind of a duel. 15. He is more comfortable at the net. Look how quickly this goes. One volley. Stay up volley, another volley. That should have been a way. It, it was ended up uh, a victory for Wally Masur. He's a very good Third doubles player. Ball. Indeed. And he's at home at the net. He can sense it and feel it. His doubles partner, Mark Kratzman, took off yesterday. They, they had lost in, in the dubs. I'm sure he'd be enjoying this match. Four Wally's four just five. playing a, a terrific third set. He's only made one unforced error. Pialine's already had. He's already had seven of them.
Dan Gossour. Three all in the third set. Sets are one all. You remember at the middle of the second set, the seventh game, uh, Masur was down a couple break points. We said, boy, if he loses that, he's in real trouble. Exactly. Uh, he held on. That. Some people were thinking, well, if he lost that, the match would be over. And here he is, three on the third, a set apiece. So he's fought back very, very well. Remember after the first set? <laughs> Could be a blowout. Oh, That's yeah. Much. People were saying, hmm. what are we going to do late this afternoon? <laughs> Wally well, he knows he's got to give Pialin his winners. The Frenchman is going to hit them. He's just got to hang around and hope that they don't pile up. He will do that. Fifteen all. sure what he did there unless he took his eyes off the ball it is we keep saying gusty and that's not an excuse it's a fact let's see what he does here maybe a little larger motion than it, than he needed just trying to cut off a little delicate angle trying to pick up the pace a little bit a little more speed on his shots and you know he's going to want to get in every chance he gets All doubles partner, Davis Cup mate, Wimbledon champion. As you can see, one here, Pancho Gonzalez to the right of him. Great pro champion. Won the U.S. championships, I believe, twice. Oh! 48 and 9, I think. Talk about a guy that could serve it. Mm hmm. point opportunities they both stay down the center of the court that time neither one wanted to open up the court and finally Pialin made a mistake it's been hard for Masur to to break Pialin because he gives you so many different looks on the serve he mixes the ball up beautifully into the service court Just. well something like that's always appropriate yeah. timely <laughs> might have hit the line because it sort of skidded through a little bit. Normally when a player of this caliber gets a swing at, he's not going to fan it. But he'll also spit in, you know, a, a 90 mile sure. an hour. Or, you know, he'll, he'll just move it all around the box. Oh! Went for that another heater, feeling. 107 that time. You know, breaking serve is, is uh, not just returning it or, or getting it back, the other guy. You, gives you first good first serve, you hit it short, and they jump all over. Just as good as an ace. Not quite as satisfying, maybe, but just as good. Oh! Now you look at a second one. Masur likes to try to step around and hammer a forehand. Way out. 
I believe that's the first smash miss by either player as we look again. That's a little more surprising than if you're trying to smash off a high ball that could be blown around more. This was a fairly low, we call an offensive lob. And just let you know they're human. mistake that would make Wally angry. I don't think he thought the ball was out. That may have been part of his reaction. I was just thinking he was mad at himself because he was just trying to get it on the backhand side. He wasn't trying to hit a win or anything like that. Yeah, speaking of angry, <laughs> Elie Nastasi, <laughs> well, a real tennis fan. Boy, he anytime there's tennis going on, he's going to be there if he can. I don't think of anger when I think of him. Mischief, maybe. Oh. What a joy to watch. A lot of talent. Yeah, yeah. Pioline. Came to Pioline. Pioline Four leads three in the third. To three. All kinds of activities at the National Tennis Center, but the most important is on Great the stadium. Response. Thank you. Pioline. Leading 4 3, but Masur serving third set. Sets are one off. That's the first point Masur has lost on serve this whole set. That's amazing. Michigan was favored. Notre Dame leads, however, 17 3. 16 0 Florida State. Seminoles have some. Some guys who can run. Has some talent, don't <laughs> they? Out! 15. Masur is getting on to peeling serve a little better, according to the statistics. And he is serving better himself. Fun match, and it two good guys just yeah. battling away. Two people we didn't expect to be in the semifinals. A much better match, I think, than we thought. You didn't have Masur in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have Pialin. I had Masur in the pool back in Australia <laughs> by the time of the semis, but he's done a good job. What's really special about this match is that they're, they're both coming from such different places. This man Pialin is going to have a lot of Saturdays like this in his life. He's just really started to be a good player. For Wally, I mean, this this is it. Or it could be. 30 years old. Happy surprise for both men. Four, 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 four. And Peeling's just 24. So as you say, with his ability, he's going to be around a while. Pretty good effort on his his serve in this set from Masur. Game Masur. Four games all. It's four all. In the third set, sets are one all. We heard Fred Stolle talk about this man's fitness level. He went through a pretty rough time. His marriage broke up about a year ago, and that's when Gavin Hopper said to him, "Look, just get yourself fit. You know, get yourself, commit yourself. You know." 
and he has become supremely fit, very committed. He says of Hopper, he says, I don't need a guy to coach me to tell me how to play tennis. I know how to play. <laughs> I just need a, a guy like this to get me fit, to get me working hard, and to, so I can get everything out of my game. And motivate me. Exactly. Get me fired up. from an, another direction, Henri Dumont, the man we've been speaking of, the ghost, is one of these very heady, intellectual guys who talks about this man, not in terms of his strokes. There's Henri Dumont right there. <laughs> the ghost. He's, there's Henri, yeah. That's number, 11, number 11. <laughs> but he's a, he, he comes to Pelin from a different angle. He talks about, he asks Pelin questions about his own game. Sort of the ancient Greek type thing where the, you know, they used to sit down and, and ask them to explain themselves. I'm sure you guys, Pat, you did a lot <laughs> no. of that Socratic wisdom thing in the I, locker room in your day, right? If we did, I don't remember it. <laughs> you didn't do the Socrates thing back in your day? Who? <laughs> Anyway, Pelin is a, is a canny enough, an intelligent enough, enough man to figure things out on his own. Not too Thank far you. from the stadium court. Here at the National Tennis Center. Oh, sure, U.S. Open of 93. Super Saturday on CBS. Thank you. Wally Masur to serve to Cedric Piolin, if this is more correct. there just trying to guide it cross court the sir plays this a little too fine maybe a little too carefully actually he knows he's got the open court he just had to direct it well well let's see if that haunts him oh. and let's see if the second serve comes to the backhand Same shot. That time the sir was set up for it, not on the 15. run. He gave himself a little more air over the top of the net, too, on that one. First serve in the ad court, you see Masur is going down the center of the forehand, but still basically trying to stay on the backhand side in the deuce court. That's on the first serve. Second serve's gone almost exclusively to the backhand. Thirty all. Thirty This is when you have a tendency to get a little careful sometimes, this stage of a match. Start to aim it. Yeah, and play a little too carefully. I mean, here's Masur, two points from, from being out of this third set. Also two points from getting even. Nice 
from Bowen. Climbed all over it. It was up high. Sukova sitting in the locker room, anxiously waiting, trying to figure out when they're going to get on for their final. That'll be next. And then the Sampras and Volkov, the other men's semi. Love, love. Some lingering whistles off that mm -hmm. Masur shot. It was close. Give you an idea that there's a little cool and the wind's blowing. Forty fifteen. Five all. Third set. Sets are one all. I think that's really a smart try by Pioline, an angle, sort of a drop volley from the uh, service line. He's a good volleyer, but he's not the most gifted one around and should have been driven fairly deep. He probably didn't think much of it either. No, <laughs> I was just wondering about that. Still has game point, though. Thank you. Have blocked out most of the bright sun, but thank you. Flat lines. That has made it even cooler than it was before. Stadium court. Healing 6 5 in the third. Masur serving. Thank you. Ready for the Any indication Pialine's going to try to insert a little more pressure? 
and try to get to the net and see if Wally can make the passing shots. Well, you look back, maybe that dominance in the first set was maybe it was just too easy for him. Started a coast. Trouble here for Masur. 5-6, love 30. The, the problem with that, Pat, I agree, when you play that well the first set, you know you're going to come down off that, that peak a little bit, and the other guy's going to come after you. short ball got the loose ball and totally overplayed it there hasn't been a serious break since the first set this could have been love 40. Now it's 30 all. Nice 30 crisp all. play here by Masur good serve gets in well gets the high volley goes in behind Pioline perfectly done 30 all. Peeling. That was his almost wife there on the <laughs> left. Turn by Pialine gets him another set point. You'll see Masur go back to the backhand on this one. Oh! On this one. Second serve to the backhand. Second serve. Huh? <laughs> Couldn't have been any better place, any uh -uh. deeper. Ten times Pialina's had break points against this man, Masur, and he's only been able to convert twice. That's a very, very deep second serve right where he wanted it. Right in the corner. Clutch. Forehand just whips past him cross court. See, Masur is going to cover the down the line shot. Third set point. semifinals Wally Masur at the USTA's National Tennis Center in Flushing Meadows. Yes, 
Masur trying to push this into another tie break. Masur, he handles it. Now he gets up nicely for the lob that wasn't deep enough. And we go to a tie break. Well, Here's another look. Good quick hands. Feet always moving. Thank you. Thank you. First player to reach seven points with at least a two-point advantage will win this set. The second set was a tie break as well. Masur, well, and that one won the first four points. On the tie break 7 3 eventually. this much court and still be able to make the shot was very very good by Pioline. Again not a big swing at it. interesting to me why Masur would not serve to his forehand as much but he volleys to it and rallies to it some. Two one peeling. Trying to take it to Masur, Peeling. Daring him to come up with the big stuff. 3 1. Pialine's sort of been shaking his arm, his right arm and hand a little bit and sort of did a couple of circular motions with his arm as if maybe his right shoulder is bothering him a little bit. You can't tell the way he's been serving. He's just trying to stay relaxed. Maybe, maybe. so. You know, look at yeah. him dancing around, trying to stay loose, alert. Oh! Big occasion for both players. I mean, this is always going to be a match of stress management. You know, they're both in the semis. Never been this far. Masur, when he gets in, this lob gets over Peeling's head. Now, Masur comes forward, and if we can see him, see him stumble there, then he doesn't have time to really recover. Here's Peeling, got to go back for that lob. 
Normally he would lob this, but he got back to the side of the ball in time to hit a regular little shot. Thank you. Here comes Masur now, and I so see what happens to him when he gets into the net. Sort of caught a toe or something. Five two. Five, Five two. Pulene leads now. After that service ace. That was his fifth ace. Two hours and 28 minutes, and we're in a tie break in the third set. And we thought this would long be over. After the first set, particularly. 6 2. 6 2, two. Pioline. Sets are one all at the moment. Game third set. Pioline. 7-8. Pioline leads. Cedric Pioline now leads two sets to one over Wally Masur. Hard to beat someone if he can't break his serve, and Masur still hasn't been able to do that against the 15 seed. And as you mentioned earlier, Mary, no service break since the first set. Obviously, the mini breaks in the tie breaks themselves. Masur to start serving first game of the fourth set. Football, Notre Dame leading Michigan 24 to 10 at the half. Florida State 23 to nothing over Clemson in the second quarter. Alabama 7 to nothing over Vanderbilt in the second. This could be the match, really, considering that Pioline hasn't dropped his serve yet. This wasn't a bad serve that Masur put in, 91 miles an hour. Pioline had a pretty good look at it. just how expensive that last game was. Break Pioline, first game of the fourth set. The National Tennis Center buzzing with activity, most of it centered in the stadium. This man has played awfully well in the last 10 minutes or so. Securing that tie break, some very forceful play, and then breaking immediately. Sometimes a whole match can can turn around in about 10 minutes' time. The end of one set, the beginning of the next. He has served well throughout. And when you're up two sets to one and a break, you look like you're in pretty good shape, but you never know. Not against Wally Masur, certainly.
15-30. Just missed it wide. Little opening now for Masur to try to get that break back. opening it's just so tough I, I keep saying it but Pelina has been such a clever server he did that against Courier who's got one of the best return games there is just kept mixing it up so well and just like that is break point he's over six 30 40 that was a terrific he just a well met ball 118 miles an hour so Masur barely took a swing at it he met it and sent it sideways for a winner for Wally Masur this is huge right here Masur just didn't get as far and quite as deep as he wanted. He hit it hard. Let's see where the return lands. See, it's inside the service line. He came on in. He'd already committed to do that. But the lack of depth permitted the Frenchman to get the ball back down. Saturday at 2.30 Eastern Time, the Red Sox and the Yankees, or possibly the Mets and the Braves. Three out of four of those teams involved in the pennant races. Braves have gotten even, haven't they, with the Giants? Yes. One game back in the loss column. They were 10 games back uh, in July, I believe, late July. Of course, the Yankees close to Toronto. Masur is sitting right on top of the net for that one. Poked it wide. Like he left his feet a little early, maybe. first. Things are tightening. Love 30. Pressure by Pialine gets him to three break points. This could give him two breaks in the fourth set.
Two hours, 42 minutes. Length of this match so far. Break point. Masur serving to Cedric Pioline. And now, this tournament summary is sponsored by AT&T. We help put your world within reach. To summarize, Steffi Groff in her fifth U.S. Open final. That'll be coming up next. She won the title in 88 and 89. Uh, Malevolous. <laughs> Super Saturday. Piolin up two sets to one in an attempt to be the first man from France since 1932 to make the final. It's quite a sight there. Shea Stadium right in the middle of the picture, LaGuardia Airport up at the top, and the stadium at the USDA National Tennis Center. At which you look right now. Piolin. He's smoking right now, just yep. like he was in that first set. Everything he's hitting is working. Senses the kill now. Two sets to one up and two breaks. Twenty years ago, 1973 US Open, a very good year for the Aussies. Newcomb won the men's, Margaret Court won the women's. Men's double was won, doubles was won by Newcomb and Owen Davidson. Margaret Court won the women's doubles with a Brit, Virginia Wade. And Billie Jean King and Owen Davidson, another Aussie, they won the mixed. 40, 50. Mr. Trabert and I did most of those matches. <laughs> yeah, you guys were there for that. That's yeah. Right. Is this 21 years in a row? You, you... More than that. More than that. You've been watching this, huh? Winners 60 to 29 for Pioline. Americans didn't do that well at this year's U.S. Open. No American women reached the quarterfinal, and only Chang and Sampras on the men's side got to the quarters. First time in the history of this event, back in 1887, uh, not an American woman in the quarters. That's some comeback kid. Uh, lost the first two sets down love five and the fifth to Jamie Morgan, his countryman. Making plans to get home. He said he hadn't been home for four months. Got a bad call and got riled up and he won the match. Good scrambling by Masur. Good net coverage by Pioline.
Not sure he was attempting to make a drop volley on that. He was stretched out and couldn't do a whole lot with it, but it worked out well for him. Peel has got that bounce back. Score helps. Somehow it doesn't seem right to call Wally Masur the comeback kid. <laughs> we say he's the oldest guy left. Third oldest in the tournament. 30 year old kid. Still flexing his right shoulder. Doesn't appear to be affecting him. 40. Summerall with Tony Trabert and Mary Carrillo. Men's semifinal match. Pioline serving. Leading 4-1. For sure. He leads two sets to one. And that is a big 4-1 because he's got two breaks. chill factor of 54 makes it feel like it's 54 degrees the actual temperature is 63. I think the wind chill is broken. It we've been colder than that. Yeah, we've been trying to tell you that Patrick. <laughs> up five runs bottom of the first. Stadium court on Super Saturday. The women's final, Steffi Groff, Sukova, 
And after that, Sampras against Volkov. Big day of tennis. Quite, quite. Especially big if things continue as they are for Cedric Pioline. And they would be if he could come back for Wally Masur. The last Frenchman to win this championship was Koshi in 1928. didn't do well at their own championships this year at the French Open only one Frenchman got to the third round that was Rudolf Gilbert I don't remember did LeConte play this year I think he was served on no cushion. he went out very early <laughs> and Henry, did he and, and yeah. uh, Forger was we mentioned had, knee had bad knee couldn't play yeah with LeConte you never know really Second double by Masur. Violin <laughs> advances six to the final. Six seven, seven six, six one. Just under three hours it took. standing by down court side net side to interview the winner let's now go to Tim Ryan well thank you Pat uh, we've got completed now one men's semifinal and of course uh, still ahead the women's championship match they're looking at the men's draw right now Pialine has advanced to the final of the US Open men's championship and he awaits the winner of the match coming up later today between Pete Sampras and Alexander Volkov of Russia and the next match on the stadium court will be the women's championship. Steffi Graf, the number one seed against Helena Sukova, is having a brilliant tournament. And that will be followed by the Sampras Volkov men's semifinal. And we'll be going back to courtside to talk to the winner of the first men's semifinal match, Cedric Pialine, when we return to the U.S. Open on CBS in a moment. Here at the USDA National Tennis Center, one men's semifinal completed. Cedric Pialin of France advances to the championship, and he is at courtside with our Pat O'Brien. This is what it looks like when you enter the men's final of the U.S. Open. Uh, all the hubbub around Cedric uh, Pialin. Congratulations. Uh, maybe your coach should just stay away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he's not here, but maybe for tomorrow he, he's going to come. I hope so. Started out strong, and then you just told me a very tough match for you. Why? Yeah. Uh, I start very well, and uh, I mean, he, he was a little bit too patient, and uh, then he, he, he in the, at the beginning of the second set, he, he started, started very well, and uh, uh, it was very windy today, so it was difficult, and uh, after it was very close, and uh, finally uh, I won, I'm very happy. You were moving your shoulder around a lot, and, and uh, Pat Summer and Tony Traber and Mary were talking about it. Is your shoulder bothering you, or are you just trying to stay loose? No, no, just... To stay loose because uh, uh, I mean uh, it was windy and uh, I, I just want to to be loose to to make a good first serve and uh, to take uh, to take the points. Will you watch the second match now? And you've chosen uh, who you'd uh, like to see in the final? <laughs> uh, yeah, I will watch, but uh, I think I prefer to to play against Sampras because uh, it's in final. I mean it's. It will be great. I don't know what, what, what's going to happen, but uh, it will be great. This is great now, right? This is the farthest you've ever come. You've got to be feeling tremendous. 
Yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. I'm very, I mean, I'm happy. I cannot say anything. I'm happy. <laughs> How have you done against Sampras, by the way? How have you played against Pete? Um, we played uh, twice, and uh, he's leading to love. I mean, uh, uh, it's going to be tough. <laughs> and how about Volkov? You played him. Volkov, uh, we played a couple of times. I mean, maybe uh, it's 3 2 or 4 3 for him. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. Well, the way you're going, I'd tell your coach to just stay away. Everything's fine here, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 uh, if it's uh, the winning, uh, the winning uh, thing, uh, let's, let's do it like this. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Congratulations. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. I don't know if you can see what it looks like around here, but this is what happens when you get into the men's final at the U.S. Open. Autograph seekers on this side and 150 photographers on this side. Let's go back to, uh, well, where shall we go? Uh, Tim Ryan's a good idea, Tim. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad it's a good idea. Thank you very much, Pat. You, know, you have to love that Gallic charm of Cedric Pioline, and you have to admire the competitive aspect of that quiet little comment he made. He'd rather play Sempras, as he said. He wants to play the number two seed, not anybody lower in the draw. you got to like that, and perhaps exactly that is what will happen tomorrow in the championship match.